Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about graphing a rational function with more than one vertical asymptote. So, how do we graph this function? Well, we're going to start with the same steps we've talked about in the, in the previous rational functions. But, so the first step is to find f of 0. Okay, when we plug in f of 0, we're going to get the y-intercept. So that's going to be 12 over negative 6, which is 0, negative 2. So 12 over negative 6 is negative 2, so we have our y-intercept at 0 and negative 2. Second step is to find the x-intercepts. So that's when y equals 0, and we can because of when we multiply both sides by the denominator, we can just say, well, 0 equals the numerator. That is not true, so we're going to have no or none x-intercepts. Okay, asymptotes. Well, the vertical asymptotes are wherever the denominator equals 0. So good first step for all of these is to factor everything. This factors into x plus 3 times x minus 2. So the vertical asymptotes happen at x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. Whoops, let me fix that real quick. There we go. So let's go ahead and graph those. This equals negative 3. x equals 2. And then the horizontal asymptotes again are, um, we check the numerator. The degree of the numerator is n is 0. The degree of the denominator is 2, so n is less than m, which means we have a y asymptote at y equals 0. Go ahead and fill that in. Now, how do we tell if the graph crosses the line y equals 0? Well, we plug 0 in for y. We already did that in number 2 when we found that this doesn't work. So it's not going to cross there. Um, there is not going to be symmetry because of the asymptotes. And then we could also plug in f of negative x. And then for number 7, we're going to plug in some points. Now we have to plug in not only points to the left and right of this asymptote, of our x equals negative 3 asymptote, but also to the left and right of the x equals 2 asymptote. So if we plug in negative 5, you can check, but we will get 6 sevenths, which is almost 1. When we plug in negative 4, we will get 2. Okay. So, that tells me my graph's going up. I'm going to swoop down like this. Not the most perfect drawing. But when I plug in negative 2, I will get negative 3. So at negative 2, I'm at negative 3. When I plug in negative 1, I get negative 2. Now, when I put y, that's the same thing as f of x, right? So when I plug in 1, I'll get negative 3. I'm seeing some symmetry here, maybe in this. Might be a parabola going on there, something like that. When I plug in a 3, I'll get 2. 
So it's going to be up there. When I plug in 4, I'll get 6 sevenths again. Oops, 3 is right here. I drew that, my last point in the wrong place. But 4 is at 6 sevenths, which is here. So I can go ahead and draw in my function here. And why why do I know where, where these are going? Because by definition of asymptotes, my graph is going to kind of get sucked into them. So they're going to end up looking something like this. So that's that graph. That's that rational function. Let's go ahead and go over one more problem. Um, now, this function f of x factors into x times x minus 4 or x squared times minus 4, which factors even more into x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. Now this is still over to the denominator, but the denominator factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, so first step, find the y-intercept. When we plug in 0 for x, what do we get for the y-intercept? We get 0 because the top is just going to equal 0. So we have a y-intercept at 0, 0. Okay, what about the x-intercept? Well, the x-intercept is where we set 0 equal to the numerator. Well, we're actually just plugging in 0 for f for y, and then we get 0 equals the numerator after doing some fraction m multiplication. So our x-intercepts are going to end up being at 0, 0, which makes sense because we had a y-intercept at 0, 0. And then 0 or 2, 0. And then negative 2, 0. So I'll have a point at 2, 0 and then negative 2, 0. Horizontal asymptote, well, the degree of the top is more than the degree of the bottom, so that means there's no horizontal asymptote, but we have one higher degree on top than the bottom, so there could there could be a, is a un, oblique or slant asymptote. And we get that by actually doing the division. Now, this isn't a binomial, so we do have to do long division here. Um, we'll end up getting x cubed. minus or plus 0x squared minus 4x plus 0. x squared goes into x cubed x times. Then we take x and multiply it down by each of these. So we're going to get x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 1 is a negative x, and remember we're subtracting all of this. So I'm going to still end up getting 0x squared, and then minus 3x, and the 3x ends up being our remainder, but we're not worried about the remainder. What we're actually worried about is this because that is our oblique asymptote. So y equals x is the oblique asymptote. So um, I, I forgot to find the vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes are where the denominator is 0. And that happens at x equals 
1 and x equals negative 1. So I'm going to have asymptotes here. And asymptotes here. And then my line y x y equals x is also an asymptote. Looks like this. Now when I plug in points, so that's my next step. Okay. I need to be able to plug in something between 0 and 1, which is fine. I can just point in one, plug in, plug in point 5 or 1 half. I get 2.5. And at negative 0.5, x is negative 0.5, I get negative 2.5. So I end up with like this cubic looking thing here, which if you look at the graph, I have a cubic fun bit, don't I? And then when I plug in points here at 3, I get almost 2. And then at um, one and a half, I get negative 2.1. So my graph ends up coming up like this. And then on the other side, when I plug in points, I get similar. And I end up with a function that looks like this, which is kind of a little crazy, isn't it? So not only do I have vertical asymptotes, two vertical asymptotes, I have an oblique asymptote as well.